Hi, my name is Michelle Weaver. I'm the general manager of GAML. I'm here with my friends. Matt Sherman, senior programmer. And Paul Statler, the inventor of Statler Stitcher. And we're here to show you some pretty cool things in CS7. Uh, the first thing that we want to tell you is because we've got a couple of issues in the software that are not completely resolved, we aren't releasing the full version today. We're going to hold back the full version and give you a demo version that you can use to play and learn, uh, but we don't want you trying to stitch until it's perfect. That's something that's very important to us here at GAML. We want everything to be perfect. So we're going to give you this demo version so that you can train and learn about the new software and all the cool new stuff in it. Um, Paul, you want to queue up the new CS7 so they can take a look? Yes. One of the first things that you'll notice about Creative Studio 7 is that visually it's much different from Creative Studio 6 and previous versions of Creative Studio. One of our goals in this version of Creative Studio was to make it more user-friendly and intuitive. To achieve this goal, we brought in a group of users with a wide range of experience, from quilters who are just getting started to ones who've been quilting for many years. To work with this group, as well as to work with our programmers, we brought in a team that specializes in human-machine interface. Together we worked to make Creative Studio more intuitive and easy to use. In the next few minutes, Paul and Matt and I are going to show you some of those changes, as well as some other great new features in Creative Studio 7. One of the first visual changes that you're sure to notice in Creative Studio 7 are the changes to the icons in the toolbar. In previous versions of Creative Studio, we often got feedback that people had a hard time understanding what the icons stood for. So we worked with our human-machine interface specialists to help design icons that actually make sense and represent what you're actually doing. If you look at this first icon here that is Start Quilting, it shows a picture of your machine head. Uh, draw Boundary is fairly similar to your previous icons in CS, where it shows the boundary. Here we have a pattern and a boundary. Uh, we're showing edge to edge. One of the things that you'll notice is that these little heart shapes, those represent patterns. Uh, dotted lines represent boundaries. Um, solid lines represent lines. And we tried to use consistency throughout the icons to help you be able to understand them better. Another great feature that we've added to the tool strip in this process is that we've changed it to make the tool strip customizable. So you can move your icons and put them where it works best for you. If you right click anywhere on the toolbar and customize your tool strip, we can now change the order in which the icons appear. We can add different icons to our tool strip. And you can notice it's now changed the order of my tool strip. I also have the option, when I customize my tool strip, I can choose factory presets, including a Creative Studio 6 preset. So for those of you familiar with Creative Studio 6, you can change that Creative Studio 6 format, click Use This Layout, and now your icons are in the same order they were in Creative Studio 6. In previous versions of Creative Studio, one of the consistent pieces of feedback that we received was that many users found it difficult to find their patterns. In previous versions of Creative Studio, you used the Windows File Explorer to go and find your patterns on your hard drive or on your portable USB stick uh, and open the files in Creative Studio for each and every project. Another new exciting feature in Creative Studio 7 is a pattern management system. This system allows you to import your patterns directly into Creative Studio. The advantage is that you only have to import them once. Then they will always be in Creative Studio in your pattern management sidebar. As you can see, on this computer, I have 1,290 patterns. I can scroll down and see more of them. And I can also flip pages. You can see here it's page 1 of 13. I can flip to the next page and see more patterns. I can also expand this window and see more patterns at once. I also have the ability to change the size of the icons. I can change them to small. Now I can see more patterns all at once. Or I can make those icons large. Now I can't see quite as many icons, but I can definitely see more detail. The other thing that you'll notice on these pattern icons is these green dots and red dots.
The green dots represent your start point, the red dots represent your stop point, and if I can find one here, the blue dot represents a jump stitch. This can be very useful information when designing your quilt to know where the start and end points and jump points are for each pattern. One of the other great features of the pattern management system is the ability to search your patterns. If I come up to this search box and I type in the word bear, I can see all of my patterns that have the word bear associated with them. If I type flower, I can see all of my patterns that have the word flower associated with them. This word could be in the name of the file for the pattern. It could also be in the tags for the pattern. So Creative Studio 7 now allows you to tag your patterns. If I right click on here and view tags, I can see the tags associated with this pattern. As you can see on this one, the pattern is a baby animal. It has a lion, a duck, a whale, and an infant in the pattern. So we've you added those keywords to this pattern. You can also see the designer. You can change say whether it's an edge to edge, a border pattern, a block pattern. If I decide that I like this one and it has a star in that and I want to add the keyword star to it. I can add that keyword, save that, and now when I come in here and type the word star in my search, my baby animal pattern with the star in it now appears. One of the new features in Creative Studio 7 is drag and drop. To place a pattern on the CAD screen, all I need to do is hold the left mouse button down and drag to the CAD screen and drop the pattern by releasing the left mouse button. A new feature is the ability to print. Just click the print icon and whatever shows on the screen will show on your page. If you have a printer set up you can you can print that here by pressing the print button press close to exit. A new feature to add a new quilt group We'll just click on this plus sign and we have a new quilt group. We can add patterns to it and so on. To delete it, we go up to the red X sign and click, left click, and click OK. We have a new file format called the GQP that's um, more secure and uh, represents the pattern data more accurately than the previous QLI. Um, I want to show you that now. Click Save Pattern and uh, I'm going to add the file type, pattern name, I'm just going to say test, author, Matt, and then I hit, um, you can add tags, keywords, collections, that's also part of the new part of this um, uh, format is that you can add uh, metadata with it. So I go ahead and do that now. Um, click plus and okay, and then it asks for a name of the file location. I'll just save it where it's at. Right click your start icon, go to File Explorer, and then um, navigate to where the file was saved. In this case it was stored in the images folder, which is not where you normally would so save it. When you go in, um, you can see the GQP. You can pick Notepad as if you wanted to see what it looked like, but you can see it's a, um, a secure format. This file format is not backwards compatible to any of the previous versions of Creative Studio. Whenever I go into CS and look at it, um, and I go to View Properties, um, well, here, let me, you can't see the tag properties. 
on the uh, project tab. So I'm going to sort by newest and the favorites list at the top and then after the favorites comes the newest item that was added. So properties, when I go into tags, you can see the demo word I added, Statler, and I also clicked that it was a block and I said the author was Matt. And so all that comes along with the uh, this new GQP file format. A new feature, we have the ability to c cut, copy, and paste. To demonstrate, if I highlight the pattern, I can cut it and it disappears. Now I can paste that back on the screen many times. If I highlight the pattern and copy, now it leaves the pattern. Now I can paste that. many times. Border corner, edge to edge, and repeat patterns can all be done in standalone mode. Here I've picked a corner pattern and now I'm going to click the border corner icon and um, the directions as to what to do are always at the top of their setups. Here it says click upper left outer corner using machine head or mouse. Here we're going to use the mouse. And then also there's a nice instruction up here ghosted in the CAD screen which click upper left outer corner. The instructions are also repeated down here in the bottom left. So you have plenty of places to tell you what to do. When you're doing it in SAM, you know, you're mainly doing it for just testing out to see what things will look like. Um, so I would advise turning on grid snap. Here I'm clicking G on the keyboard and that turns the grid snap on. And then I'm going to click uh, my upper left, my upper right, my lower right. Um, I do think it's kind of important to be kind of reasonable. I've got a 5 inch grid here, so I'm coming down 4 grid increments, which is 20 inches. And then my lower left, and then you go to your upper left inner corner. And just work your way around. Okay. And then the next thing we want is the border length. Everything you'll notice in your setups will be grayed out until you enter the required information that the setup needs. So here I'm just going to say that this, uh, I don't know, a 70 inch long quilt. And the border corner did not fill in. Uh, one of the nice things about border corner now is that it can be dynamic. I'm going to hold control and I'm going to pick my border piece and you can see there it, it fills it in and if you're happy with that you can go ahead and hit OK. So edge to edge can also be done in standalone mode. Um, here I've picked baby animals and I'm going to click edge to edge. Um, just like in the border corner I think it's a good idea to use the grid and you have your messages in the upper corner um, and also on the cat screen. So. I'm going to come over 10, 20, 30, 40, 50, 50 inches and down 20 inches. And just like in border corner, you can't do anything until you enter the required information. It really wants to know the quilt length. And so then it fills in with your uh, uh, baby animals. You can change um, your repeats. You can change your spacing. Maybe I want them to be a little more nested like that. And one of the really nice features about Creative Studio 7 is that you can dynamically change your patterns in, in uh, these setups. So here I've changed to uh, pine trees. If you're happy with it, just hit OK. Alright, and I'm going to, for our next section, I'm going to make a new quilt group because repeat patterns does not automatically make a new quilt group. I'm going to pick the teddy bear because I like him. And so here um, in standalone mode you can just click any point um, and it'll put the teddy bear at that point. It, you can change his size. 
you can um, if you want to you can put in um, like a total width and a total height and um, he'll fill in these locks mean that um, this is these dimensions are locked you can change the lock to be on repeats and rows and then repeats and rows are locked you can also like an edge to edge you can dynamically change to other setups and you can see that the 50 by 40 has been retained um, you can try lots of different things and then when you're happy you can hit OK a new feature is the universal handles as you can see we have three different handles on the screen at one time and I can pick those individually to select this you use function key F8 you don't have to cycle through each one of the handles and it's real handy for changing your patterns you also can cycle through these by the different handle selections. If I double left click on the pattern, I can cycle through those. A new feature in CS7 is cursive text. If I click on the T and type in a word, and now if I click on cursive, you can see it is a cursive text. A new feature is Build Pattern Catalog, which is available in the Patterns tab. And when you build it in the Patterns tab, it will include all the files in that first section. So here we can see down to Alpha H. And if we scroll, scroll down on this first section, you'll see down to Alpha H. If you want to make one for the next um, group of 100, um, you can just hit the Next tab and build, build it off that. It will it is also available in the Project tab. Um, both of them are accessed through this paper icon and then this will build a catalog of whatever patterns you have in your project. You can save it as an Excel document, PDF, or Word. Um, I'll go ahead and save it as a Word document. Here it is, open in Word.